Hi there, welcome back to another video and hi, welcome if you're new, I'm Kay, I love talking about all things minimalism, simple intentional living and also homemaking. So I don't know about you but I am definitely feeling the squeeze at the moment, inflation is so high and the cost of living crisis is so real. So I thought today I would share 10 ways that you can save money in this current climate. Avoiding your triggers is super important when it comes to saving money, it's easier said than done and these triggers can look like very many different things, you know, for me certain triggers would be going down the mug aisle in the supermarket, sounds silly, but every £3 mug that I buy is another £3 that I've lost and another mug I need to find space in my life for. It could also be going down certain aisles in the supermarket like the clothing aisle or going into certain shops just because it's a habit. It could also be something as simple as every time you get paid at the end of a month you instantly spend all of your money and the trigger there is getting paid, so it's about how can you avoid that trigger or just reduce that trigger so obviously you don't want to avoid being paid but you can avoid spending money within a certain time frame of getting paid and it could also look like other things so if you are someone who has a monthly cycle then it could be something as simple as actually tracking your cycle and noticing patterns. So for me, I notice that my pattern is in the luteal phase at the end of my cycle. So just before I get my period, I am spending. <laughs> and I like to call it me nesting, you know, I am feeling a bit more down, I'm feeling a bit more tired, and it's like getting a little pick-me-up buying things. So I tend to try to avoid buying in that phase of my cycle because I know I'm only buying to comfort myself and I don't need the things so yes definitely have a think about what triggers could look like for you I'd be intrigued to know what some of your triggers are and um, some that you've identified and if you haven't ever identified them some that you think could be a trigger for you it goes without saying that if you sleep on something that you're less likely to buy it the next day I've had tabs open tabs galore that I've gone to sleep and the next day I've woken up and I've closed all the tabs because I'm no longer interested in whatever I was looking at the day before it makes so much sense to just write a list I've got a list in my bullet journal I've done this for years it helps so much when I'm in a bit of an impulse spending habit I write down all of the things that I think I want and then I sit on them and I usually do that for about a month and if I still Still want them after the month then I will proceed with buying them and if I don't then I'll just cross them off and I think it's good to see you know if there are certain times in the month where you're wanting something more than others because it's easy to just keep buying things but actually it takes a bit more self-control to just wait and see if you need the thing and the feeling is like if you get that impulsive cra craving that impulsive urge to buy it it's likely that you don't need it at all and that you're actually buying that thing to fill a void and I've noticed that pattern in myself time and time again and that really like deep yearning, that sense of grief that you can't buy it, it's like the child throwing the toy out of the pram, you know, let yourself be in that uncomfortable position because that's the only way you will ever break those impulsive spending habits. Leading on from the last point, if there is something that you want, have a look on Facebook Marketplace, have a look on eBay, you know, have a look in your local groups for your community and see if you can find it secondhand. Not just this, but you know, if you are wanting new clothes, new items for the home, have a look on Depop, have a look on Vintage, you know, all of these amazing websites, you know, there is even Freecycle and Olio, where you can have a little look and see if there is something that you could upcycle, something you could turn into a project. We don't always want to buy second hand sometimes there is a need or a want to buy something brand new but I do personally think it's a good thing to try and buy second hand where we can it's something that I'm personally going to do going into this year if there is something that you want to buy new then waiting for the sales could be such a valuable thing especially because if you're doing what I said in the first place and you have it on a list and you're just waiting then it can be easy to just wait for a sale I would also say to track the price so when you write it in your journal write down the price of it so you can keep track of it because sometimes sales are sneaky and actually they can increase the price a few weeks before and then decrease it and actually it's probably the same price as it was before so keep an eye on things like that but also you know if there is a deal where you can get buy one get two free or buy two I can't remember the <laughs> so out of the loop with buying things clearly but if you can get something on a really good offer 
um, you know you can use your club card points like with Tesco in the UK there are certain credit cards that you can use or debit cards you can use with banks where you get money back or cash back definitely look into those things and try and save money in ways that you can um, you know if you are able to buy things and you're able to get points back for those things then you can buy other things with the points you made so you kind of win it's like a win-win situation with that so definitely have a look into different initiatives and different ways that you can save money like that you all know I'm an avid meal planner. I swear by it. I don't always stick to it, but I think having the extra brain space free for about half an hour to sit down, write a meal plan for the entire week to plan every single meal or even just the five evening meals in a week, whichever meals it is that make you feel really frazzled and stressed actually hold yourself accountable to writing them down, to making a shopping list around these things because I find if you just go to the supermarket and you buy whatever you usually buy, 18 tins of tomatoes, 5 tins of tuna, every single fruit and veg in the shop, you'll find that at the end of the week you have so much food waste. And food waste is not only bad for the environment, the economy, it's so bad for yourself, it's so bad for your own saving habits and spending habits, you know, you are wasting money at the end of the day. So if you can bring your budget down by planning those meals and figuring out actually what do I have in the cupboard, what can I make from scratch at home this week that I don't need to go out and buy lots of ingredients for, what can I just top up my shopping list with, I think you'll find that it's so much easier to save money and personally I find it definitely is. I've saved so much money in the past by going through the cupboards, rooting around, making these bizarre concoctions of meals but actually it helps us to save money that week and if you do that for a few weeks throughout a month then you save a lot of money that month and if you can keep doing that going forward over the year you'll save so much more money and there is so much more to life than just spending money on food you know we need food to live but we also need to enjoy life and have money to spend on other things other than food probably the easiest one and the one that is potentially mostly overlooked because we are so busy in our lives you know it's easy to stop shopping in cheaper more budget shops and it's just maybe more convenient to go to one supermarket all in one go and get everything together I am definitely guilty of that but definitely have a look at some more budget options so here in the UK that would be Aldi, Lidl, there are farm foods as well there are so many good shops so if you're buying things in bulk frozen from farm foods it can be cheaper than buying it from shops like Tesco and Morrisons. Saying that though, places like Tesco have the club card rewards, so sometimes that can win, you know, you can win either way. It's just a, a case of actually looking at how much your weekly shop costs in a month, and if you are shopping at a bigger, higher tiered shop like Tesco, Morrisons, or even somewhere expensive like M&S, for example, how much does your food shop cost? Go to a budget shop, try and shop there that week, see if there are any downsides, anything that you can't get from those shops, but compare how much it's cost you because it's eye-opening how much different it can cost. Another thing to keep in mind is where you're getting your meat from. So big chain supermarkets, it's it's frustrating because the meat there is terrible quality, the animals are not treated nicely at all, and you're paying money for that, you know, and I think that we can spend our money wisely even when we are on a budget so have a look at your local butchers you know go in see what they've got to say if you have a massive chest freezer fill it full you can get so much for your money in places like that and then you can eat out of the freezer rather than buying fresh meat every single week and leading on from that too is fresh fruit and vegetable boxes if you're someone that eats lots and lots of fruit and vegetables have a look if there are any local initiatives anyone who is selling fruit and vegetable boxes because that can be a really great way of saving money too unsubscribe easier said than done I know but if you actually look at the things you are subscribed to and check in with them see if you're still using them so things like Netflix for example Amazon Prime they're so easy to just have and if you don't have them you feel like you're missing out you're not being able to watch the latest program but how often in the last six months have you watched something on any of those platforms and if the answer is like two or you know once every blue moon when there is a really popular show that you don't want to miss just cancel the subscription and start it up again in a few months time when there are more programs 
programs that you can watch. It's a way that you can save a bit of money and it seems like penny pinching here and there, you know, maybe you're going to save yourself £5 a month on that subscription. But when you add that up over a year, it does come to a lot and if you times that by five subscriptions, you know, you are wasting a lot of money on these things. It's one of the bugbears I've got with today's society is everything seems to be subscription based, which is fine, but it also means that your monthly, you know, amount of money that you've got to play with is less because you've got all of these transactions coming out instantly as soon as you get paid. So definitely have a look at those things and see if there's anything that you can just scrimp on. Also have a look to see how much it was when you first signed up and how much it is now and if you think that that price increase is actually worth the money because it's okay to say it's not worth the money and to, you know, maybe even share these subscriptions with other people if that's a possibility too. So things like Spotify, for example, it's cheaper if you can share it with other family members. If you are struggling with money, one thing that may happen is you may never want to look at your bank account. Oh, I've been there. I have been there where you just think the last thing you want to do is open that bank account and face what it says and you go to pay for things and you flinch as you put your card in, you think I've got no idea how much money is on that card, I don't know if I've got any money in my savings, it's a stressful place to be. So take five minutes to just face it. It's not easy to do, especially if you've been on a bit of a spiral and you've been spending lots and lots of money in places you shouldn't have done, but without facing that reality, you can't move forward. And so if you find yourself ever in a position where you're in a shop, you're buying for something, you've got no idea how much is in your current account, it's a good idea to then assess the situation because that just shows that you are spending without thinking. The fact that you have no idea how much is in your current account right now. So let me ask, do you know how much is in your current account right now? Do you have any idea what the last thing that you bought was? And if you did buy something recently, did you check what the price was before you tapped your card? Because those tap those card tappers, they are dangerous. One of the things I've spoken about in the past is using cash instead of card, and I fall in and out of this habit, but it's one of the best things you can do when you are on a budget. So I'll make sure I'll leave my cash envelope system video down below, and I'll leave a little one of those things up here as well. Definitely have a look at that video if you are trying to save money because actually having physical cash in your hand is so much easier to keep accountable than just keep tapping this imaginary money on this card. Well, it's not imaginary, but it does feel that way when you are just spending without thinking. I can feel you all yawning at this point because obviously it's so simple and easy to say you need to have a goal but we do without goals we do not know where we're heading we have no idea if we're meeting those goals and you're just kind of in limbo. So think about what it is that your goal is. So it could be a monetary goal, it could be a savings goal, it could be a goal to organize your finances and every time you get paid, move this amount of money to this account and this amount of money to that account. It could be a small goal, it could be something like, you know, this month I'm gonna look at my subscriptions, like K said, or it could be something else. You know, just think about what those financial goals are gonna be for you. And it could be that it's just something so simple. Like I said, you're gonna open a new savings account and every month you're gonna move five pounds, five dollars, whatever you want to move, move into an account. It's something so small, so simple. But if you can do that and you can stick to that for the next six months, then you will find that things get so much easier because it's that sense of pride that you did it, that you managed it and you accomplished it. You know, goals are overlooked a lot these days, but they are critically important to our mental health and also to our well-being as well. Kind of leading on from the last point is accountability. So how will you keep track of this? How will you make sure that you are meeting these goals and how will you keep yourself moving forward? So accountability looks like lots of different things for lots of people. It could be that you check in once a month, you set a little timer and you know, in your calendar, once a month it pops up and that's the day that you're gonna look at your finances. It could be that you have a spreadsheet and you really enjoy spreadsheets, so you love to keep it updated and you keep track of everything. You could try my no spending challenge and you could do that for 30 days and you can take off all those days and say at the end of it, I did it. Think about in the past ways that you've held yourself accountable and what ways work for you. It could even be that you need someone to physically be there and watch over you as you do something. This sounds scary and 
honestly this would scare me too but if for example I got my husband on to watch over me as I look through my bank account I would be less likely to want to impulse spend because I would feel so embarrassed you know if he questioned things where things were from and that doesn't work for everybody you know that makes me feel stressed but there's a reason that it might make you feel stressed because it's making sure that you're holding yourself to your true potential you know you don't want to be that person that impulse spends you don't want to be that person that just spent 200 pounds on something you didn't need so accountability is important so if what I've just said just stressed you out completely then you know that that's what you probably need to do <laughs> so that's it that is my 10 ways that you can save money in 2023 I really hope this helped and I hope it pushes you forward motivates you and inspires you to look at your own finances I'd love to know if there are any ways that you save money yourself any ways that I've said in this video that you're going to try or haven't really thought about before then let me know down below you're an amazing community you raise each other up so much in my comments it makes me so happy and let me know what you're working towards as well what is your big goal what are you planning to buy in the future or what are you doing for yourself so for example for me at the moment we are trying to set ourselves up for a solid future so we are saving as much money as we possibly can just so that we have a nice safety blanket to live with because I think that's so important and so overlooked in today's society but that is it from me today really hope you've enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe if you haven't already I post videos twice a week on all things minimalism simple living and living a more intentional life so like this video if you enjoyed it and i will see you all again in my next video have an amazing day